Hello there, Stacia Dears, and welcome back to Europa for another fantasy morning on the moon. We had uh, quite an interesting episode yesterday. We finally put together our advanced furnace with some basic automation, or some actually fairly complex automation that allows it to select recipes and produce different kinds of ingots. That is pretty cool, right? Um, we're going to go through today and make up a bunch more of everything, but I also want to do some home improvement stuff. There have been a lot of very good suggestions in the comments, uh, and I'd like to get to them. Okay, first up, people suggested that we should add stackers to all of our uh, printers, and you know what, I think it is time. I've been putting off doing this because I'm lazy, but uh, it's, it's well overdue, I think. So let's go ahead and do just that. All we need to do is pull up uh, some space in front of it, and then let's print up a stacker, or 50. We're gonna need iron and copper. Uh, another thing someone suggested, which I thought was genius, was to uh, leave these open um, so that we know when we've got a full stack of the various different kinds of metal. Right now we've got a no, no full stacks of anything. Almost got a full stack of lead ingots, uh, silver ingots, silicon ingot, nickel ingot. Yeah, we got almost a full stack of everything. Uh, but people did suggest that I just leave these open. So if I see stuff on the floor, boom, we got a thousand iron with a little bit more in the chamber. I think that's a great idea. Someone also suggested uh, using vending machines because they will automatically combine the stacks for you. That's a great plan. Uh, I will get to it. I think that'll be the final upgrade. But for now, as you can see, we have a need of 50 Electrum per machine. And we would need 7 just for the base ingots. Um, or I suppose you could just put all of them into one machine. That works too. Uh, yeah, or maybe one for base ingots, one for alloys. Yeah, that could work actually. Either way, we. Uh, what I'm going to do is another excellent suggestion. I know there's quite a few of these covered today. Uh, which was to set our stacker here to like 500. Oh, sorry, not 500, to like 50. Uh, and then feed our ingots through it. And then we can put like 50 copper in one machine, 50 in another, 50 in the third. And that way we don't have to constantly go back and forth and, um, and you know, move the, the ingots between them. And that's a great idea. Uh, and then if we need any more, we can just come here and grab some. Okay, well, let's start off with our golden copper, I suppose. Uh, one for everybody. Uh, you wanted iron. That's right. There we go. You can take some iron and make me a stacker. I love this idea. It's really clever. And gold, and we need copper and iron in this one. Oh, this is very cool. All right, and then we're going to want three stackers, one for each machine. So I'm going to let that print. I don't really need much gold in the hydraulic uh, pipe bender, but you know what? It's whatever. Okay, there's our three stackers. We are going to need more of them in the future, uh, because there were also some suggestions about how to improve the sorting. Uh, but for now, this is where we're going to start. So we're going to simply grab this, and we're going to pull up these cables, like so. Actually, no, that one can stay. This one goes, this one goes, and then we just need to fit these guys in here. So we want it to face this way, and we can scroll through the different formats. Yeah, so we want to come in the out, in the back, out the front, just like that. And then we're going to need a circle like so. And then we just loop around them. All right, cool. So we have all of our stackers set up. Now we just need to set the limits. I'm going to set them just to 50 for now, because that's what most things stack to. It will only be able to stack things to their max stack size. So just make it 50, because that's the highest anything stacks in this game. All right, now we're going to need to get our input sorted. And as you can see, we have a small problem. It's difficult to reach the input over here. So we're going to, you guessed it, run more stackers. Um, print. Run more shoots. Oh, we got some cable coil embedded in the roof. How quaint. Okay, so my personal favorite way to do this is to simply put an input, an inlet, like this. Uh, we want it to face that way. I just put it on top here. Um, oh, I don't need one. On, I don't need one on this side, actually. Uh, we just put one on top here. And I don't actually need to do this, this side at all, so we won't. Uh, and then all I need to do is, I, oh, I want to throw something in here. Boop, I just toss it in that. And I'll show you what I mean by this in a second. We're just going to need a corner coming up, turning around. And then we'll need one over here coming up, turning around, and a straight shoot. And just like that, we can now throw stuff in. So, for example, if I want to put some more gold inside of my electronics printer, which, let's be honest, I'm probably going to want, just throw it in there, and boop, it pops in. That easy. And you know what? While we're out working, why don't we get ourselves some more heavy cable? We're going to need a lot more of this in the future, and we might as well just get that stacking. 
Ah, that's a bit of a problem. I should move that vent. You know what? Honestly, I think we should just rip out this airlock at this point. It's completely redundant. It doesn't do anything for us. Um, I might move this whole contraption somewhere else as well. Like this filtration system. Or we just leave these walls in and just remove the airlock. You know what? Let's just do that. Let's just do that right now. Uh, I think it's I think it's run its course. And that way we can we can filter the temperature and, and gas in this room a bit better as well. It's like there's probably a bunch of X in here and crap, right? Yep. Yep, I want to get all that out. And then just a hand drill to finish this off. And then we can get all these components back from inside here as well. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, a lot of this stuff can get recycled. These small batteries, that battery charger. Uh, this line this line will will keep. I should probably start putting transformers on everything. Rather than using APCs as well. That was another very good suggestion. Uh, I need a crowbar first to pull you apart. And then we need to take out the chip. And well, of course we'll hold on to the chip because we can just we can just reuse all of these uh, airlock components. Um, when we build out our furnace airlock. I think it's a great idea. I think we should Hunger enclose the critical. furnace. Hunger critical? Well, turns out that's only a short walk. Alright, this was always a bit of a dud as well. Um, I've got some useful stuff in here we can take out, but I might just recycle that. Uh, this whole, like, suit system, it was a cool idea, it just never really worked the way I wanted it to. Ah, we need to be a little bit careful here. I am moving this pipe back, but it might explode. Uh, 12 megapascals of pressure. Which now means that this tank filler is going to explode if I put a tank in there. So we need to make ourselves a stronger tank. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I want to, sort of make sure I don't blow myself up here. 18 megapascals. If I pop one more, it's definitely gonna explode. Yeah, 30. What we're gonna do, I think, is we're just gonna pop off this. And we're just gonna link this back up to the main network. Let that even out. 10 megapascals, much better. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, this was definitely the safer way to do it, rather than having to make a new tank. Although we should make a new tank anyway, because they last longer. Turn you on. Pressure regulator, pressure, we want you to be, what we said, 9,000, I think, was our goal? There we go. Okay, lovely. And we have some white pipes. Uh, we also should spray that. Okay, cool. So I kind of want to just close in this space now. I'm going to manually pressurize this pipe uh, with the uh, gas mixture. That's something I'll just have to do every now and then until we set up automation. But for the most part, I'm happy with what we're looking at. We can probably sort out some of this, but I think we'll do this in stages, right? We don't have to do it all at once. Um, I think the next big plan is going to be to get the combustion centrifuge going. Let's get infinite resources because then we can make infinite changes. Uh, let's also get our wall type 2 set up again. Okay, another nice thing we can do is to sort out some floor grating. Uh, but I want to make sure I'm finalizing my various power networks first. Uh, and one more thing I want to do to that effect. Oh, nice. We got two stacks of that. Okay, one more thing I want to do to that effect is to uh, take these, put these splitters on their own network. Because I have a feeling that we are going to draw way too much power. Uh, at once and blow everything up if we keep doing it the way we've been doing it. So then we'll run you up this way. And then I think we need some transformers. Let's print up a few of those. Transformer. This one. Uh, iron, gold, copper. Give me a few. It'll make me two. Let's start with two. That's good. Okay, next I think we need to move this up a few tiles. So that we can uh, get a split going in the cable. It's going to be a necessary evil. So put you up there instead. Pop that open. Stick that on. Oh, we've even got some uh, some leftover cape. We see this is what you excavate when you're looking. Oh, and it looks like I've got a wall on here as well. What the heck? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> this is a there's a bunch of really random crap going on here. Alrighty. Also, I think I want to get rid of this locker. Uh, in fact, let's just do that. Thank you. Uh, we're going to get rid of that locker so that we can put the battery charger on the wall connected to the batteries, not the APC, because this is kind of a stupid way to do it. Lots of improvements today, people. Alright, so what that should mean then... Oh, we got lots of heavy cable. Lovely. What that should mean for me then is that I... Oh, I need, <laughs> I need to power this so I can open it up. 
Ah, uh, yes. What other what other issue we have? Um, I'll, hold on. We can get we can get really stupid with it. We can just do that, and then we just put this back, uh, facing this way. There we go. And then we'll just have to reset the filter to 50. Okay, cool. That's one way to do it. And now we're going to use transformers. So transformers kind of work a bit like APCs, except they don't isolate the network, which is why it, they're not great for doing data stuff, but they're really good for doing everything else, um, for limiting power flow. Because these cables can only support 5 kilowatts, and I think there was something like 12 potential kilowatts of draw, which that's a short circuit waiting to happen. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put down one here and one here. In fact, I want another one, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. We'll run a straight line from you to here. Uh, and we should honestly do these everywhere in the base. Everything should be on a transformer. This is going to be for the airlock. It's going to have its own transformer so it doesn't ever explode. It also prevents faults from uh, moving down the line, which is really important. All right, and then we'll run these through the APC like so. And that way, look, the APC will only ever let 5 kilowatts through, but it can sometimes jump over that very briefly. And that's what that's when you get short circuits, right? So we're going to want to set this to... Uh, the airlock can have, like, 1,000 watts. I think that should be fine. Turn you on. Oh, the airlock's on. Uh, the rest of the base, I think let's limit that to, like, 3,500. So if we know if stuff's turning off, we know we've gone over that threshold. And we're happy. All right, everything's on. Uh, make me another transformer. What, I need some copper? Surprise, surprise. All right, then I want one more here, and I think I'm actually going to move this one more time. Uh, I want to put the... I want the... the this network here to be on its own line. So let's do it like this. And uh, please, again, in the comments, if you have any better suggestions for me, for better ways for me to do this, let me know. I'm listening. So now we need to put in the power on this side just like so and then we need to give that transformer a value uh, let's put like 3.5 kilowatts on that side as well and that should be plenty okay so a thousand three five three five excellent that should work that way we'll be able to turn on this uh, and run all of our machines I hope but let's have a look at what our draw is now as well as our potential that's the part we're really worried about potential of 3.5 excellent uh, potential of 3.5. So we've limited the maximum draw that can go down this line, which is exactly what you want. All right, then it's less important to do it here, but as you can see, we have a potential draw of 14 megawatts, uh, which is disgusting, and that's because that's the amount of power that the batteries can dump through. That's why you want to use transformers, is because it can, it can exceed that line very quickly. Um, let's just have a quick look at where everything's linked up to. Uh, we could probably fit a transformer in right there, huh? I think I'm going to. Voila. Okay, cool. Turn you on and give you a value of... I think we'll do like 2,000 for our uh, for our atmospherics network. And I hope that's enough. Do I have a reader on this line? I don't. Let's grab one quickly. We'll just steal this one. And then we'll need to make some more. So, potential is... Okay, our actual draw is 550, potential 2. So we can expand that by about 4 times. Okay, excellent. And I guess if this wants to have a wall kit, it can have a wall kit. Let's give it a wall type 2. Uh, is that in the correct orientation? No, I want the thing on the bottom. There we go. Let's stick that over there, and uh, let's seal in the flavor. There you go, it looks a little bit nicer, doesn't it? We'll, we'll, we'll pretty up the whole base today. Uh, but first, we need more resources. So let's go do our centrifuge. So turn on our air, and uh, charge up our battery, grab some quick water, and then get out there. Alright, let's quickly recycle these, so that I can uh, then pull that thing up, because we're going to need to move everybody. Okay, cool, we get a, you know, 9 grams of ore back. Alright, turn you off, and pick you up. You're moving. Uh, do you actually need to move? Yes, you do. We want our ores to go that way. Realistically, I want to remove all of this, like this entire setup, I'm going to pull it up, and we're going to, this might take two episodes, and we're going to relocate it this way, right? We want our fuel line to feed our gas centrifuge, which we'll probably put somewhere like here, so we'll need to run the output line into the centrifuge, 
Then the centrifuge is going to run forward in a chute network. We'll have a splitter, one that will connect it. We'll have to open up the furnace, of course. One that will connect it to the furnace's input, so we can run stuff through that. And another one, or I'll turn and as I say, or another and another one that connects it to the output of our splitters. But I, actually, now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. What if we run? the output of the centrifuge into a huge number of silos, right? We'd make like a big row of silos down here, one that stores each kind of ore. Uranium we can just dump into the void because we can't use it for anything. We already have three silos over there. How many would we need? Uh, let's have a look at ores. We would need one, two, three. Oh, we don't need charcoal. Well, we might need charcoal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. We'll need 12, plus we don't need for the ices, we can just melt the ices. Um, because we might use a mining rocket at some point. So we would need 12 silos, we need 9 more silos. So we could build our centrifuge here. Fuel it. Run these chutes underneath this whole system. Over here, up into the furnace, right? Alter oh, actually into storage, and then selectively from storage into the furnace and we could get a more advanced script that can pull resources as needed to make the ingot yes yes that might be the system then the output is uh, either displayed here or is itself filtered back into this sorting network which we need to streamline a bit okay hold on I'm beginning to see and then we can expand this out so that we have a we could just feed it all into a vending machine, or we could feed it into individual vending machines just for unbelievable modularity and insane waste and expenses. But you know what? It will have infinite resources, basically, once we get that centrifuge going. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Now, it's going to take me a while to set this up. So what we're going to do in the meantime is just turn our arc furnace back on, which means to open all this up. As you can see, we've stored up hundreds of resources uh, in the time. I just, I've, what I've done is I've turned off the output of this device. It's currently at 31. Um, and honestly, these deep drills probably aren't going to move. So let's just keep stacking up ores. 30 ores here. Once this is all pulled up and empty, I'll feel a bit more confident in uh, how we're going to how we're going to lay this out. Because these ore drills are probably the only thing that's going to stay still. We can move the wind turbines really easily, so we probably will pick them over here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of options here. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just feed this output, which currently goes into these. We'll just make it take a left, and it can run up here. Yes, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, and then what that means is that the centrifuge will be fed off a line that runs like this. And we can go ahead and get that set up so that we can plug it in as soon as we have the gas centrifuge running. Okay, so that'll sit like that for now. This isn't connected. Uh, and then when it's time, we can just pop this up and run it this way. Okay, cool. And then the dirty ores will pop out of this side. That's fine with me. All right, then we need to carve a path. Uh, we should actually probably go underneath now um, and start using the, the space underneath these frames, like a crawl space. All right, so let's pick up two, a few of these. Let's pick up like four of these wind turbines so we can uh, make, a, make a route through here. This is going to take a lot of shoots. Dump those over there. Uh, actually, they might get stormed. Let's uh, just dump them, dump them over here for now, and let's work out where our, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Gas fuel generator? No, that's not what I want. Combustion centrifuge. Let's work out where this thing's going. So it would be nice to give it a bit of space. We could run it uh, like so. Right, that should work. Input on the left. Uh, gas input on the bottom left it on this line so we could put it I don't want to put it in front of my walkway this is actually a perfect spot for it right here so that would go there just like that okay then we would need to pick up this this all right so what do you need you just need some steel sheets and a welder I think to finish off yep and some cable coil oh that's really cheap awesome okay cool combustion centrifuge set up uh, and the actual controls are facing the way I want them to. That's lovely. Uh, then what do we need? We got a, an input and an output. I'm guessing this is just going to pump out some hot CO2. So for now, I'm just going to vent that to atmosphere. Uh, 
our chutes would then, of course, run underground and into here. Let's get that set up. Is that, a, is that an iron frame I see before me? Disgusting. And you know what? I actually want this one to be a window. So I can see if stuff is queued up. Or backed up, rather. Okay, that's looking a little better. Uh, and then we're going to have to do the unthinkable and weld that iron sheet back in. Oh my god. I'm actually going to puke. We've got like 27 steel frames out, steel sheets out here. Dude, I need to get a better inventory system. This is this is chaos. All right, cool. But now that's linked up and it's still traversable. Uh, and then we're going to have to do the same thing for the output. We're going to need a lot more shoots. Uh, but let's have a look at how this works first. Uh, we have some fuel pipes right here. And we have more left over from our previous build. So I kind of want to run this. Where's the input? That's the output. That's the input. So we're going to run this down. And I'm going to have to pull up more frames. We're going to run this down. I'm going to go along here, and then we'll connect up here, I think. Yeah, right there. Okay, next step, let us power this thing, and we're going to have to use the uh, battery power, which is this line. I really need to paint that a different color, uh, but that's going to require us to, uh, you guessed it, <laughs> pop a frame <laughs> and go low. Voila, there we go. And I actually, I'm going to plug in the power on this bad boy this time as well, because I have a feeling, uh, I have a feeling that we're going to want that fairly soon. Uh, or rather the data, sorry, the data. All right, so this thing should turn on now. It's flashing errors because it's got no output and it has no, it has no output uh, vent attached, that's okay. Um, but we will start running fuel through it. Let's go get a passive vent. I'm just gonna, uh, once again, I'm just gonna dump that CO2 into the atmosphere. For now, I know, dirty, dirty. Uh, it's actually how much how much have we got in here? This has been turned off. Turn this back on. Um, we are 9.4 megapascals, 552. Uh, let's mix up a little bit more gas. A little bit more fuel gas, that is. And put down these turbines again. We need every drop of power we can get. Uh, temporarily, I'm going to put these wherever they fit. Okay, there we go. Wind turbines are plugged back in. Uh, and we still have a little bit of a walkway over here we can work with. All right, this is still chaotic. We're going to find a permanent home for them soon. Uh, but we need every drop of juice we can get. So let's not be silly about this. Next up, I want to run some output shoots. But now this is just going to dump everything onto the floor, which is not ideal. We're going to want to put that into silos. So let me go see how many of those I can print at the moment, actually. And let's get the passive vent so that... Because we can worry about that later. Let's just get the... Let's get this thing running. Because it takes a while to spool up, and it takes a very long time to spool down. Okay, cool. There's our output setup, so we should no longer get an error when we turn it on. We don't. Let's uh, let's get this thing running. So, I have been informed that the way I want to do this is uh, to very, very slowly allow a little bit of combustion, and then up the throttle. And we want to get this thing up to like 1,800 RPM without letting the stress get too high. This meter does not show pressure, this meter shows stress. If the stress in the machine is too high, it will simply wreck itself. And so we're going to very slowly decrease the throttle and increase the throttle until such time as the thread stabilizes, goes down a little. Okay, let's decrease the, the burn. Let's let the stress decrease a bit. Let it start it's slowly. It's still getting up to speed a little bit there. Okay, stress is coming down. Let's pump that up again. Stress is still decreasing. Stress is still decreasing, but the RPM is not increasing. Let's pump that up a little bit there. Okay, stress is really low, and it's still decreasing, and the RPM is increasing. So we're going to slowly, slowly just work its way up here. Okay, let's give it a little bit more juice. I think we're going to do it on 10% throttle the whole way. Thank you so much for the commenter who explained to me the process to do this. It's been very, very helpful. Uh, we can also just uh, get an integrated circuit for it, but I thought I'd do it the, uh, the manual way to show anybody who doesn't want to get involved with those. Okay, we are about 10% of the way there, just over. Okay, we are now up to 30% throttle with 0% stress. We're starting to get there. We're starting to get there. That's 40% throttle, 0% stress. Let's go up to 50. 
Oh, here we go. It's purring. And let's pump the uh, combustion a bit. 20% uh, on the choke there. Okay, now I think we can slowly just start to walk it up. Oh, no, that was a little too fast. A little bit too fast there. Back it down. Back it down. But we are getting to a very comfortable place. 50%. To 80. He's coming up to speed. 60. To 90. 70. 100% throttle. 80% choke. 90. 100. No stress increase. This thing is running, baby. And we can start feeding it some resources now. It's Obviously, it's not at full speed. It'll get up to, I think it's 1,800 RPM. Reminder that this uh, does 100 RPM, meaning that one combustion centrifuge running at full speed is better than 18 of those, and it takes like zero power, basically. It's amazing. Uh, even right now, this is worth four and a half of those. So even in that short time, this is doing more than all four of those. All right, so let's uh, let's start deviating. Um, I think it's time we go ahead and stop this this line. We'll allow it to finish what it's got. Uh, but the rest of this is going to be fed into that machine instead. And let's see this working. Okay, there goes the first one. And we are producing... Oh, look at the speed. Look at the speed. Already got three, three grams, four grams, five grams. Yep, yep. We're going infinite, baby. Alright, and I can start reclaiming some shoots. And then the last thing on the agenda for today is going to be reclaiming... Uh, the shoots up there as well, because we're going to need a lot of these to do my grand plan. We've already got, it's been about three minutes, and we've already got uh, 33 grams of iron, hydrocarbon, gold. It's ridiculous, man. This is ridiculous, and no stress. Uh, it looks like they have nerfed it, though. We are now capping out our RPM at 512. I'm assuming that's because I'm not using nitrous as my fuel source. we still got plenty of fuel. We could switch that over at some point, I suppose. All right, but I think we can stop mixing. Yeah, we are out of everybody. Yep, we're out. Okay. Uh, you know what? Leave these on. I think this is the smarter way to do it. Leave everything here on. And then just turn off that. That's the smarter way to do that. Yeah, because that handles all of this then. Ooh, that's a lot of juice. That's a lot of juice. Even at only 501 RPM, this has definitely been nerfed. Uh, I'd say that that is a pretty fantastic uh, production rate. Look at that. I mean, that's literally worth five of those machines. It's so much faster. We could get two of these running, to be honest. Now, hold on. <laughs> Maybe that's overkill. We also definitely don't need um, any more drills, because we are keeping up. Well, I think, I think if, uh, if four drills... If four drills were too much for four of these, and this is worth five of those, maybe four drills is just as many as we need for uh, for one of these? That seems right. Alright, let's continue the salvage operation by sorting out this mess. I cannot believe I didn't get this the first time, but this is going to be so obvious once I do it. Okay, so we're going to pull up all of this, because I'm a big goofus. I'm a big old goofus. Watch this, guys. Watch this. I'm gonna have to. I am gonna have to reprogram all of my ingot sorters, but that's not the end of the world. Um, watch this. If I just rotate this right, just one, then it's the exact same thing, but we don't have to snake them through. The right line just passes all the way down, and the left line accepts the. The left line ex uh, takes out the the output. It's genuinely gonna be that easy to do. It's that easy of a fix. And I might move it up one. Yeah. So we don't even have to move these lines. Okay, I'm gonna have to get the computer back up here, but that's fine. Okay, I now need my computer. I've set up everything up there, so let's just grab our motherboard. We sell, we salvaged about 15 extra, uh, 15 extra thingies from that. So I don't know if it was really worth all the effort, but it, yeah, it's done now, right? Um, we're gonna need our computer. 15 extra so uh, shoots, that's the word. Uh, so it was, it was okay, but it's not great. Um, let's put this down over here, and I'm going to probably just leave a few computer, computer connection points. I honestly might just get some extra computers going at some point here, so they don't have to keep coming back and doing this movement. Uh, they're not exactly expensive, uh, and I'm lazy. 
Okay, let's put this down like so. Screwdriver that up and feed it the sorter motherboard and then I'll show you how we've done this. Uh, turn you on. Okay, so it's really simple. Uh, stuff comes in the, the left hand side and then the stuff we don't want goes out the left hand side. So now we just have a straight line going all the way through rather than that wandering snake. Uh, thank you very much. Again, I think it was King of Hell again for that suggestion. The right hand corner is where the stuff we want comes out. We've got iron, copper, gold, nickel, silver, lead, silicon. And this will be anything else, which for now is going to be all of those alloys. Um, we're just going to dump them all on the floor over there. And I'll probably just have an alloy vendor so we don't have to expand the base too much just for that. All right. So, silver sorter. This is where this is going to get horrible. It's time to start clicking buttons. Uh, maybe don't use the screwdriver, though. Uh, iron sorter. We now have to find... I'm going to unlock that uh, scroll wheel. Oh, God. That's broken. We're now going to find... The iron ingot. Because if I click and drag, it, it clicks out. It's bugged as hell. Find me the iron ingot. Like underneath all the tools? I think yes. Oh, thank God for the, the, the Logitech G502 Hero. The gamer mouse. Because uh, my ass would be dead without it. Okay, give me some iron. Drop that one first. And let's see where that ends up. Should come back through here, right? Yep, there it is. It pooped it out even. We had enough. Okay, then the steel should just pop out of this thing. Let's see. I will put in an output on there so that it at least... Uh, hold on. Let's put an outlet so it doesn't uh, pop out the side because that can sometimes happen. Hey, there's our steel. Okay, cool. So now anything we smelt in there, I'm going to plumb that into that network. I'll do that off camera. Uh, and then we... Oh, actually, I'll just do it now quickly. Um, and then anything, so whenever we make a smelt, it will go whoop, and just pop out inside here. We don't need it outside. We have to bring it inside anyway, so we might as well do it like that. Let's go and set that up. Okay, cool. This is now plumbed in perfectly, meaning that the furnace is fully functional. Let's, let's run it through its paces quickly. Uh, give me a quick smelt of, uh, any random ingot, and let's see if this works. So I throw it in there, right? It's going to make the copper ingot. And then I have to manually pull the lever, but that's fine. We should now see our ingots. Oh, there it goes. Okay, perfect. That is working. So now we don't even have to use the heavy power intensive arc furnace to do all our smelting. We can just do it right here. Oh, there it went. I just saw it. Okay, nice. And then I'm going to smelt up this random junk just because uh, I don't have any not full stacks. There goes our lead ingot. And there goes our nickel. All right, cool. That's working. But my battery is low, my hydration is critical, my jetpack is out of fuel, and uh, this thing is still uh, very, very, very inefficiently pumping out all of the juice we're trying to get it to do. Uh, we are, thankfully, almost finished with all of our processing, though, so this will end eventually. Uh, and then, yes, then it will be time. Then it will be time to go full combustion. But let me know what I'm doing wrong with that. Still not entirely sure myself, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for hanging out today. And bye-bye, people. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for the month. Couch Potato, The Senate, Kelly Ananas, Call Me Bo 82 Riley David, LCG Canyon Sahar, Knee Cruncher, Old Man Tater, Frickin' Friendly Beaver, Not K Arthur, Cut Beef Go Ham, Jack Smallman, Rivo, Adachi, I'm Alpha, Alan O'Sullaher, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Mel Roman, and Officer C4. You guys rock.